but which is one of, if not the dearest, passage in the Word of God to the world of Christendom, found in St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son. Fooled you there, Mr. D. Dot. <laughs> his only unique son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله. And you said in 40 years you have never heard anyone explain the difference between being begotten of God and created. And I want to end your 40 years in the wilderness now Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. and to explain to you that begotten means exactly and precisely what it says. Begotten, fathered, conceived of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was indeed, as man, born of the Spirit, born of the Father. Begotten, not made. And I'm so glad you made that distinction because it is central to the Christian faith and it actually establishes his deity that what is begotten of God is God and what is created of God is not God and that is why the deity of Jesus Christ is revealed in his birth uh, that just as you so eloquently quoted Billy Graham saying that the Holy Spirit overshadowed the Virgin Mary and, 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 and uh, you seem to think that someone was upset by the idea that that the Father sired Jesus. Well, I am not upset by that at all. It's absolutely scriptural. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wa Allahu akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wa Allah. select you for God so loved the world and incidentally the word begotten also means to produce sir <laughs> so we agree with you that Jesus was not physically begotten by some animal act if you ask an Englishman what begotten means we don't know because the word begotten is not modern English it's not a common word because it doesn't happen every day. Uh, the way Christ was conceived happened only once in all of human history. So we are both trying to say the same thing, but the language of the Bible is such that it leads to other interpretations. And this is, I'm only quoting modern catechism of the Anglican Church, the Roman Catholic Church. They say that Jesus is the only begotten Son Begotten, not made. If you say this is not modern English, why in 1985 they have it? Why don't they change it? So, you find it in the Oxford Dictionary, the word begotten. And begotten means what it says. You see, I can call any one young man here. You, you, stand up please. Stand up. You mind if I call you my son? Do you mind it if I call you my son? But depends on what. <laughs> you see? He's on guard. Can't you see he's on guard? You know why he's on guard? Because of that word begotten. He's thinking that I might insinuate that I begot him. He's afraid. <laughs> Sit up. Any young man, you Stephen, if I call you my son, I know you won't mind it. If I call you my son. Uh, the Bible says we shouldn't call any man father. Yeah, but I, I'm not calling you father, I'm calling you son. <laughs> and in the revision, the kingpin of the evangelist, the preacher, the hot gospeler, the Bible thumper, John 3.16. No Christian preacher is worth the name if he can't clinch the deal with John 3.16. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, and the authorized King James Version, that he gave his only begotten son. My brother Swagat changed the word begotten to unique. 
This is not from the King James Version. The King James Version says, begotten. I heard Brother Swagger on TV, or was it video? This morning, this morning. There he's speaking to a group as if it was his own church group, you know, giving some lessons on Babylon. And I think it was on that or another one. He used the word begotten this morning. And in eight hours' time, he changed it to unique. <laughs> I'm asking, are you ashamed of the word begotten? Are you ashamed of it? That Jesus is the only begotten son? And Brother Swaggart, in one of these 30 books that I had to purchase in South Africa before coming, these are his books. More than 30 I purchased, and I went through each and every one of them. I had to. I want to know what my brother is talking about. What, is he, what does he really believe in? Because generally when you speak to a Christian, he, every Christian happens to be unique, absolutely unique. As soon as you corner him somewhere, he says, but I don't believe in that. As soon as you corner him somewhere, he says, I don't believe in that. And every one of these thousand million, anyone I meet, he's unique. Everyone is unique. He belongs to the Church of England, but he doesn't you know, believe in what the Church of England teaches. He belongs to the Roman Catholic Church, but he doesn't really believe what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Everyone is unique. So I said, now let me see now, what does he say in black and white? And in black and white, I found that he uses this John 3.16, and in his quotation, in his book, he says, begotten. Tonight, he says, unique. Can you see the reason? The reason is obvious. The Muslims have been taking exception to these terms. In the Holy Quran, we are told, Lam yalid wa lam yulad, that God Almighty, he does not beget and is not begotten. And there is nothing like unto him. Walam yakul lahu kufan ahad. Then again, in very strong terms, the Quran condemns this idea that God begot a son because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. And we are not to attribute such a quality to God. As the Christian says in his catechism, he says, Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten, not made. And I have been asking Christians, Please explain, what are you really trying to emphasize when you say begotten, not made? What are you really trying to tell me? And believe me, in 40 years, no Englishman with the name has opened his mouth to me to explain to me what this word means, begotten. It had to be an American. It had to be an American. He was on a visit to Durban and he came on a guided tour of the mosque and I happened to be a guide. And discussing it came up I said now what does it mean what are you trying to tell me what is what does it mean to say begotten not made he said it means this American tells me it means sired by God I said what he said no 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 I don't say that this is what it means and believe me that is what it means begotten not made means sired by God I said is that what you believe that God did he said, no, I didn't say that. This is what it means. So the Muslim has taken strong exception to such an expression about God, that God begot a son. It's according to your language, your catechism. The Roman Catholic catechism, the Anglican catechism, the Methodist catechism, the Lutheran catechism. You accept this. This statement, begotten, not made. So not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every dog, pig, and donkey was made by God. As such, metaphorically, Metaphorically, he's the father of everything. But he said, no, Jesus is not like that. He's begotten, not made. I said, please explain. And no explanation. So this was something which the Muslims took exception to. And the 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they threw it out to appease us. Did the Muslims threaten you that, look, if you don't take that word out of the Bible, we won't supply you oil? Did they do that, the Arabs? Did they tell you no oil if you don't take this word out from the Bible? Why did you take it out? Because it was an interpolation. It was not the word of God. The Bible you are carrying, it has this interpolation. And you said this morning, I heard the tape, he said one word, even one word. He says, if it is not supposed to be there and it's there, he says, the whole book should be thrown away. Allah, Allah.
قالوا اتخذ الرحمن ولدا لقد جئتم شيئا ادا تكاد السماوات يتفطرن منه وتنشق الارض وتخر الجبال هدا ان دعوا للرحمن ولدا وما ينبغي للرحمن ان يتخذ ولدا